areas of our life that we often reserve where um, we don't say it emphatically, but in the way that we act, it's almost as if God is off limit to certain areas. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We, we, we surrender sometime when it comes to our praise and certain compartments of our lives. But I don't know, that song is just ringing in my spirit. I wonder today, as we came to worship, is, is there a total surrendering of our will? A total surrendering of our lives. A total surrender. We're in the house of the Lord and we sing that song and sometimes we sing it because it's one of those hymns of the church and we know it, but the question is, is, is it where we are, where we can, where we can, where we can stand in the presence and, and I, I know we're in the presence of this company and I, I, I appreciate your patience, to, but, 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 but sometime, amen, I, I want you to think about your career, your family, your personal life, come on, amen, somebody, your time, thank you, Jesus every aspect of your life can you really stand before God and say I surrender all 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus that, that's where the Lord wants us that's where he wants us and I feel I feel as we get as we move forward in this service today as we prepare for the word of God and as we as 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 we we're talking about worshiping and entering into his presence it's hard to really get from God what we need from God if we don't come surrender we cannot come to God on our own terms and conditions we don't come to God to negotiate with God We don't come to say, God, if you do this, I'll do this. Or if you will bless me, then I'll respond in this way. No, you got to come empty. You got to come so totally surrendered. And you say, Lord, whatever you say to me, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want to do my, with my life, here am I, God. I surrender all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As you take your seat, just meditate on that once more. I surrender. There Thank you, Jesus. Meditate on that. I surrender. Oh. Not my will, not my way, not my thoughts, not my ideas, not my plans. Thank you, Jesus. When I surrender all, God want to bless somebody today. I said God wants to bless somebody. Thank you, Jesus. But you got, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But even as you sit in anticipation of whatever is next or whatever God has to say, even as you sit on your seat, you have to be in a posture where the Lord can bless you. Sometimes folks, you know, give great attention or think that it is in our physical posture, but I believe it's really the posture of our heart. 
attitude of our heart and in, in, in a place of receptivity, a place of surrender. Thank you, Jesus. Where we sit and we wait and we yield. We yield. Thank you, Jesus. Where we yield and say, I surrender all. God Almighty, Jesus, Jesus. God is already working right now. Thank you, Jesus. Where we say, I, I, I surrender. If you, can, if you can get there, God will talk to you. If you, if you can get there, God, 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 God's, God's just waiting to bless you. Thank you, Jesus. All of those things that have hindered your life. Every stronghold of the enemy. Every habit that needs to be broken. Everything that the enemy has used to depress and oppress you. Everything that the devil has stole from you. Ah, oh, my God. Every line spirit that has attacked your mind. God Almighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. You can have, and I decree in the name of Jesus, that on this Lord's day, for those who will just simply say, I surrender all I, my God God is ready hey God oh, yeah, yeah. God is ready God is ready this morning to step into somebody's situation yeah 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 and turn it around yeah 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 I just need you in your spirit as we can continue and we're grateful for all of our friends our visitors and that you've selected this as your place of worship I want to continue in the move of the spirit right now I want to exhort you to keep your mind in a posture of re receptivity thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I want us to turn our minds to the hearing of the word of God and then we're going to ask our worship team to lead us into one Sermonic praise before we listen to the word of God. God bless you. Amen. Word of the Lord. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore.
bow down Jesus. and worship Him. Worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Enter in. Oh, enter in. Come on, let's worship together this morning. Bow down. today and say bow down
that we want to call your attention to in Proverbs chapter number 10 and verse 25. It's a foundation. It says there, and as the whirlwind passeth, as the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Somebody ought to be able to praise God right there. I want to talk just a little while if the Lord will help us uh, from the subject. The storm is passing over. Amen. 
ask for your strength, your illumination. Pray that the breath of the Almighty will rest on us and that every heart will be prepared. Receive your word and declare that it will not go out void. Accomplish that which you have so purposed. And all the glory is thine in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. There are three distinct groups of people in this church today. There are those who are just getting out of a storm. There are those who are in the midst of a storm. And then there are those who are getting ready to go into a storm. Everybody have to go through storms sometime. Scripture declared that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them out of them all. Whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved, you have to go through storms. And I, I heard Job said, if you note this verse, Job 30 and 22, it says, you lift me up to the wind and cause me to ride. Just look at that verse. You lift me up to the wind and cause me to ride. You dissolve me in a storm. Isn't it true that so often we, we're so quick, as I've said before, to look at situations and circumstances of life. We are, uh, get, get captivated by what others have done and others have said, what people do to us. We get... Yes, captivated by what the enemy has done. Amen. Job said there, you lift me up to the wind. You control the wind. Amen. Storms and things that come in my life. I need to know the, the, the source. Now, uh, one might say, well, Pastor, are you su suggesting that God perpetrates evil? You know, can we point at God for all that has happened and transpired in our lives? God has a way of taking life. And uh, uh, allowing adversity and trials, or let me call them storms, to come. But uh, we know that whenever he does, there's always a purpose in what, a, in what God allows. Does anybody believe and know him and trust him enough to know that he has a purpose? In everything that he allows in our lives. We ought to take courage for Isaiah the prophet. Verse chapter 4 verse 6 says. There will be a shelter to give shade from the heat by day. Sometime we're going to feel the heat of life. 
But he said there will be a shelter. Not only that, but and a refuge and protection from the storm and the rain. All of us go through storms, but when you know the Lord, when you trust the Lord with your life, and as we sung just a little while ago, as we surrender our lives completely unto the Lord, is there witness that God is a refuge? He is a refuge and a strength and a very present help. In, in trouble. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is to try to go through this life without a shelter. If a storm is coming, I don't want to be caught out in the wilderness. Nowhere to run. No place to hide. Amen. Uh, yeah, you, you, you. You, you have a better chance when adversity comes, when the wind is blowing, to know that you have somewhere to go. All of the prophets at some point had their storms. The disciples of the Lord Jesus had their storms. Each of the apostles, the apostle Paul, he had some literal storms. Time he had been shipwrecked, but not only that, beaten, persecuted, troubled from within and from without, ailments in his body, challenges with his resources, storm after storm, sometime uh, seemingly out of control, but one thing he learned to say is, I heard him say one place, thanks be to God, <laughs> who always causes us to triumph. How many of you know just because the wind blows in our lives, and just because the storms come does not mean that we are defeated? Hey, can I talk a little while? Most of us who are People of faith and those who have been to church for any length of time at some point have probably heard one of the stories, whether it was from Matthew's rendering or Luke's rendering or Mark's rendering, that even the Lord himself was in a storm. Amen. Would, would, you, would you open your Bibles to look with me for a little while at Mark chapter number four, a uh, time in this setting where Jesus, the Bible said, had been teaching. He had been teaching in parables, teaching the word of God. In fact, the Bible said that he was by the seashore. Come go with me. Look at him side, beside the seashore. Crowd thronging. Jesus actually got in a boat. And as he sat in the boat, the people, the multitudes, if you will, were on the seashore. He sat there. I can see and imagine his voice amplifying across the waters as he sat and taught in parables. Having taught them to trust God. Having taught them how to believe in God. Amen. But how many of you know that the Bible declared that faith cometh by hearing? There's a time that we hear the word of God. But how many of you know that after hearing, faith also needs to be tested? A lot of us would love to just be able to come to church and hear and hear and hear and, and feed on the word of God and believe and think that our faith would be developed. 
simply because we hear. But just as sure as you read and you hear the word of God, don't mean the devil's going to back up off of you. In fact, the truth be told is look like just when you make up your mind that you're going to try to get a little closer to God. You're going to pray a little more. You're going to fast a little more. You're going to make steps toward God. Isn't it interesting how look like trials and storms seem to come from every side? Look like the wind begin to blow a little bit harder. Why? Because, amen, amen, faith can't really fully be developed. It, it comes by hearing. Oh, my God, somebody. But, but, but after, it, after faith coming, it's got to be tested to, to, to see if it's able to stand in the midst of the storm. So, the Lord Jesus at the... Uh, the end of the day, decided, okay, I done taught. Let me say it in my own words. I've taught all day long. Y'all done heard me preach long enough for today. You've got all of this rich, deep truth locked up in your mind. Now it's time to put it to work. So he says to them, and if you will read with me and for me, uh, my brother, uh, um, Mark chapter 4 would you start at verse 35? And the same day when the even was come. The same day after he had been teaching throughout this day when the evening was come. I can imagine if there's anybody familiar with having to teach and amplify your voice and pour out your heart. Declaring the word of God. If you do that all day long, by the time the evening comes. You ready to uh, uh, resort, recline, get away from the multitude, amen, somebody, and rest yourself. Somebody said, wait, 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 but this is Jesus, isn't it? Don't he have the ability and the energy to really go all day long? Yes, he was all God, but he was all man as well. But the Bible declared that when the evening was come, what? He saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. He says unto them, it don't say that he got out of the boat. In fact, I like to believe in my mind that Jesus, in the same boat that he had used as his pulpit, says it's now time to launch out. Amen. Uh, amen. I, 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 I believe, how many of you know that sometime... Uh, things that God use. Amen? How many of you know that he'll also carry that through? But is there a witness that will believe that if, 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 if God will use an instrument, uh, he's a God that will also provide protection for that instrument? Oh, Y'all ought to say something. Uh, that's why we ought, to, uh, we ought to be looking for every opportunity we can to serve God and to be used by God. Amen, somebody. I don't want to wait until the storm blow up to have him on board. I'd rather yield myself and say, Lord, you can use, you can come on my boat, you can come in my life. Come on, you can use whatever I have for your glory. Amen, even before the storm comes. He says to them, let us pass over unto the other side. He says, let us pass over unto the other side. Why did he want to go over? Because I believe if you read further, and I'm not going to do that, you'll find out that there was some other ministry that had to be done. And the Lord says, I want to go on over to the other side. It's, it's, it, amen. Yes, read on. Let me hasten. And when they had sent away the multitude. They sent away the multitude. Some perhaps went back to their homes. They being tired as well. Some went back, you know, to their various destinations. But what? They took him even as he was in the ship. They took him even as he was in the ship. The Lord, some went one way back home that was on the shore. Perhaps there was other little ships around. 
And the disciples decided that, well, or, 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 or in obedience, I should say, took the Lord and headed out for the other side of the lake. Yes. And there were also with them other little ships. Other little ships traveling along with them. Mm -hmm. And there arose a great storm of wind. And there arose, the Bible says. We know this story well. It's not going to take long to get through this today. But he says, and there arose, what? A great storm of wind. A great storm of wind. We, we've talked about it. with this, this is the final message in a series of four messages that we have talked about storms and the storms of life. How life can seemingly change on a dime. Well, things can be going smooth in your life. And then all of a sudden... Uh, uh, a, a strong wind of adversity, a storm comes seemingly out of nowhere. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it's a storm in our marriage, a storm in our finances, maybe in our uh, body. Get a bad report with our children, on our job, in our government. A storm suddenly blows up. Amen, somebody. Wait a minute, Jesus, you said, let's go to the other side. Lord, could you not, did you not know about this storm? I mean, Lord, if, 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 and if you did know, it seems like you would have warned us. You, you would have told us to wait until tomorrow. You, it seems, Lord, if you, if you really... Uh, 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 the God uh, that, that we, we believe you to be, uh, your prognosis should be, you, 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 we, we should have been able to see this coming. All he said is, let's go to the other side. How many of you know, amen, just because God said it, and you're on your way somewhere, don't mean that there's not going to be some adversity along the way. The Bible says a strong wind, a uh, a, a mighty storm suddenly arose. Yes. And the waves beat into the ship. And the waves. I noticed that word beat into the ship. The waves began to dash into the ship. What? So that it was now full. Amen. It's one thing for, you know, the, 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 the uh, we, we said early on that sometimes water symbolizes trouble, if you will. And it's one thing for your, and, 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 and life has been compared to a voyage on an open sea. And it's one thing to have to navigate your way through life. And, 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 and sometime when, when life is good, I, I was on the way to church this morning, coming down 301, saw a big uh, recreational vehicle pulling a little jeep or something behind it, and they had a little sign on the back that said, life is good. I'm on my way to church. I don't know where they were on their way to. And I said to myself, amen, life is good. Amen, amen somebody. But life being good doesn't necessarily mean that you get to, you know, get, get your toys and, 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 and drive down the road and go wherever you want to go and you have the freedom to do whatever you do. That's not, amen, amen. How many of you know that that might be good for a while? Well, come on, somebody. But, but, but then, amen, you need to understand that sometime you can ride on the water, but then things can change and all of a sudden water start getting in your boat. Come on now. Amen. I'm all right as long as I'm riding the water. But what happened when the water started filling the boat? Trouble start hitting on the inside. Come on, the devil start hitting your house, messing with your money and your mind and, and your stuff. Amen. Y'all don't be bothered by the word stuff. Amen. Amen, somebody. You got to still know that he's God and life is still good. May I say to somebody, life is good even if it's water getting in your boat this morning. Come on, I wish you'd just touch somebody and say life is good. 
riding down the road and I heard him say that life is good. Amen, somebody. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that because sometimes the devil will have us believe that life is not worth living. And just because water come in your boat don't mean life is not good. Life is good when Jesus is on board. Storms will come and sometimes the wind will blow in our face, but and it may blow a little while, but you got to learn how, come on, with the, the, amen, with tears in your eyes and come on, with the wind in your face, you got to be able to stand up and say, God is good anyhow. Not because I got all that I wish that I had. I don't have to have all of the money. I don't have to have a, 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 a $300,000 vehicle riding down the road to, be, to, to understand that life is good. If I had to walk up in here, come on somebody. Amen, amen. If I had to come here on my last dime, God is still good. And he's worthy. I say the Lord is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Oh my God. I want to tell you that whatever you're going through this morning, you ought to have a praise in your heart. Come on, you ought to have something. Come on. I hear, I hear us, amen. And I, 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 I'm not talking about happy talk. I'm not just talking about the church jargon you know you know how we get in church and we say god is good all the time amen and, and come on that's I, I call that happy talk sometimes i mean it's a true statement but for some folks it's no more than happy talk it's church talk it, it's hey, come on it's come on it's, it's like we oh my god sometimes hey man we might have five one another but unless that get in your spirit and say god is good all the time it takes the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to amen somebody. Hey, oh my God, when water is getting in your boat and trouble is filling your life and you can yet say God is good. I'm crying, but he's good. I'm hurting, but he's good. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him a praise, somebody. Let me, yes. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Now, water filling up the boat, and Jesus is in the back of the boat. Yes. Asleep on what? a pillow. Asleep. On a pillow. On the pillow. Remember, he's all God, but Jesus was all man as well. Jesus is tired, and he's asleep. Oh, amen. Have you ever been in the midst of something and it just looked like Jesus is asleep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I've been, I, I've been going through. I'm smiling on the outside. Crying on the inside. And Jesus Look like he's asleep. Where are you, Lord? Don't you know what I'm going through? Don't you know how long I've been here? Didn't you hear my cry? Haven't you seen my tears? Lord, don't you know my struggle? Do, 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 do you not see the danger that we're in? Jesus is asleep. I want to submit to you that in his humanness, he was asleep. But I believe that, ah, uh, yes, but, 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 oh my God, and, and, and glory to God. But I, I, I want you to know that, 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 that God the Son don't sleep. Amen, Amen somebody. 
Yes, yes. I, 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 I read there in Isaiah, I'm not going to go there, but in 45 and 15, just write it down and go there sometime. It says, verily, he is a God that hideth himself. God is a God that looked like when your trouble is at its height. When, when things are at their worst. Sometimes, why would God hide himself? I mean, when I need to see you. When I need some evidence. When I need some assurance. And I've been singing the songs and believing your word that you're with me all the time. I remember what your promise where you say, I will never leave you and never forsake you, but I can't see you right now. I'm talking to you, but I, I'm not getting any response. Lord, I mean, why would you hide yourself? Why would you hide yourself? I mean, look like when I need you most. Uh, the Lord, the Lord, glory to God. Listen, listen, just because he hid himself don't mean he's absent. Sometimes you just can't see it. What do you mean he's not absent? Because he, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. With all power in his hand. Not only does he uh, hide it himself and all the, always there, but I, but I also want you to know uh, um, he, he, he's never late. Habakkuk says something in, 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 in Habakkuk 2 and 3. It says, but as when he tarries, and then at the end of the verse say, he does not tap. Amen, somebody. He, he tarries, but he don't tap. Well, what do you mean he tarries, but he don't tap? It, it's just like God is, 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 is slow to, to, to move. But then he don't tarry because he ain't never late. He, he's tarrying. He's letting you go through. And he's taking his time in responding, but he's not tarrying because they'll be their own time. He, he tarry, but he don't tarry. And then, and then not only that, but he sleeps, but he don't sleep. He, he, he was sleep on the boat, God Almighty, but he wasn't sleep to the situation. And in fact, if you heard what it said in our opening uh, text today, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy, slip, thy foot to be moved. And, oh, my God. He that keepeth Israel, he shall neither slumber nor sleep. He, 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 oh God, in the flash he'll take a nap. He, he'll be on the back of the boat and, and it might just seem like he ain't moving, but he never slumbers. In other words, I, I might seem like I'm not responding. I don't see, I don't understand, but, but don't fool yourself. I don't slumber, neither do I sleep. God don't never take a nap. Come on, somebody. He don't never lose consciousness. He don't ever, uh, come on, come on, be, he, he don't ever get to the place, come on, y'all know how we do, when we get sleep, we don't know what in the world is going on, because we sleep, we lose cognition, we, 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 we lose, we, we're in a state of, 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 of consciousness, sometimes all kind of things can be going on around us, and we don't know, but God, he, he's on the back of the boat, and he's sleep, but he really ain't sleep. Sleep in the natural, but not sleep in the spirit. Because if they would have just thought now, where well, they, they were, oh my God, hallelujah. Come on, let me just go, let me go, let me go. Yes, yes. And they awake him. And they awake him. They, how many of you know the thing, listen, when, when, when water begin to fill up your boat, and when you're about to lose hope, glory to God, how many of you know we need to know where to go? Amen, somebody. And, 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 and the thing that I like about these boys, they didn't just pull out their oars and begin to row a little harder. That's what we try to do sometimes. When, when the waves are going and the wind is blowing, we run faster. We try harder. We put ourselves into it more. 
but they had sense enough to say, you know what, it's time to call on Jesus. Oh my God, when they went and woke him up, amen, how many of you know that's their way of praying? They, I got to go to where I know some help is. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible declared that they went and woke him up. I believe that's what time it is. Somebody's going through something in your life. It's time to wake up Jesus. Now, Pastor, you just said he didn't sleep. What are you talking about? I'm talking about prayer moves God. Faith will move God. Do I have a witness here? And when it seemed like he's sleeping and seemed like he's, I dare you to begin to go on your knees the more. Turn down your plate and begin to talk to the Lord. Glory to God. How many of you know God will move, amen, according to our faith? Yeah. Hallelujah. They went and woke him up. And what did they say? And say unto him, say Master. Say unto him, Master. Carest thou not that we perish? What? Carest thou not? Don't you care that we perish? Sound like a slight rebuke to me. Well, Lord, you, you not, can, can I say it like I want it? Lord, you ain't scared? You're not scared we're about to drown out here? I mean, what a question. Do, could they really have believed that that boat was about to sink? I mean, it just looked like they should have been able to just settle their spirits and say, Jesus on him. This boat ain't going down. Jesus is on board. I believed him when he said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. And if he's on board, if he go down, yeah, yeah. glory to God. Yeah. I mean, if he ain't going down, we ain't going down. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And, and, and isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it interesting how sometimes, amen, we, 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 we forget he's on, really, who's on board? So they ask the question, Lord, careth not. That we perish. Don't you care we're about to drown? Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of you know as long as he is on board in your life, you will not go under. As long as the master is on board, you can't drown. As long as Jesus is on board, you cannot and will not go under. Oh, somebody ought to encourage yourself right now. Come on, amen, somebody. You saved, you belong to him, you ain't going to lose your mind. Come on, G come on, God ain't going to put no more on you than you can bear. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. Rise up in your spirit and begin to bless the Lord and know that as long as I got Jesus, I know I have the victory. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, give him a praise. Read on, I got to get through. And he arose. And the Lord arose. And rebuked the wind. And rebuked the wind. He arose and rebuked. The wind. The Bible says he he awake. Yes, rebuked the wind and said what? And said unto the sea, peace be still. Spoke to the sea, hush, peace, be still. One 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 uh, correct rendering is be dumb, be muted, silence. What can a man can speak to nature, to speak to a storm, to speak to a situation? The, 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 the noise that's been ringing in your life and says, hush. Sometimes when things are going, we, we feel like, we feel like, my God, if you've been in a storm, it looked like take time for the wind to settle down. It takes time for the waves to subside. But then the Lord is able to speak to a situation. And when he says, peace, be still. At his word, every force stop. The wind cease. The waves hushed. The boat settled. It had to be startling for the Lord to say, 
peace. Hush. If he can speak to the wind, the wave, and the situation, I want to submit to you there is not a problem that you have or a situation that you're in or a storm that you're enduring right now that God is not able to bring peace at his word. Thank you, Jesus. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? The, 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 oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why are you so afraid? You've heard the word of God. Why are you doubting? Why are you, why are you not trusting me? All that you've heard, why are you fearful? Yes. How is it that you have no faith? How is it that your faith is so little, so, so wavery? When I'm on board, I am your Lord and I am your master. And that is the question that the Lord is asking us today. Why are you afraid? Why are you doubting? I mean, God is aware of your storm. He's aware and he has power over the storm. And when he says that's enough, it's enough. Your storm didn't come to stay. And it ain't going to last always. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And they feared exceedingly. They feared. Now, now they was, <laughs> they was, they were scared of the storm. But when the storm was over, the scriptures say they feared exceedingly. Well, wait a minute, what you scared of now? I want you to know there's a different word fear use. All of a sudden, they begin to all reverence him exceedingly. Because they realize that what, oh my God, fear and exceedingly saying what? And said one to another, what manner of man what is this? What kind of man is this? Yes. That even the wind and the, the sea. Even the wind and the sea obey. What kind of man that can look at a situation and say hush and it's got the hush? What kind of man? Come on, that is able to walk up in your house and say, hush! God Almighty and everything have to settle down. What kind of man is this? Glory to God. I'll tell you what kind of man. He is a man that has all power in his hand. He is a man that is omnipotent, um, omnipresent, omniscient. He knows all and he's able. God Almighty is a witness that he's able. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I want to submit to you and remind you that there is no problem too big for him. There is no sickness that he cannot heal. There is no habit that he cannot break. What kind of man is this? Oh, my God, there, there's not a relationship that God can't heal and restore. If we'll surrender to him and trust him, we can't doubt him, but we got to believe God. Do I have a witness here? Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. I want to close this morning in uh, that opening verse, Proverbs 10, 25 says there, as the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Now you know, some of you know that uh, sometime I'll read from different translations uh, uh, of scripture. And I looked at that verse in, in Amplified and it says, when the whirlwind passes. King James says, as the whirlwind passes. The Amplified says, when the whirlwind passes. Another translation I read and have preached from is the New Living Translation says, when the storms of life come. And wait, 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 wait. Wait. You know, Pastor, you, you read these different translations, can, can we trust them? Can, why, why, would, why would, in the Amplified, the common 
commentators and scribes would say, when, the, the, the King James in the original say, as the whirlwind passes. The Amplifier says, when the whirlwind passes. And then the New Living Translation says, when the storm comes. Why are they different? Is, is it passive or is it coming? What, 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 uh, which of those translations can I trust? Uh, what, what, is, is, it, is, is, it, is, it, is the storm coming or is the storm passing? Is it as it passed or when it passed? I want to submit that it's coming. And it's passing. In fact, it came to pass. Some of us, many of us, have been in some storms in our lives. We've seen some great storms. Katrina, her, come on, amen. You can remember some of the names of some devastating storms. I was reading this week of, of, a, of a deadly storm. Hit, I believe, the coast of India. But one thing about every storm in the history of mankind that is consistent with every storm, each storm has its own path. It has its own uh, glory to God. Every storm has its own direction. It has its intensity. It has glory to God, its own speed. Every storm has perhaps a, 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 a uh, different death toll or, 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 or when you determine how catastrophic that storm may be. But one thing that is consistent about every storm, none of them lasted. care how powerful they were they blew for a while and then they stopped and I want you to know people of God that, that, that somebody glory to God just been through a storm and you can give God some praise cause the Lord done already spoke to your situation and you can look back when you didn't think you were going to make it and look where God has brought you from and brought you through. You can lift your hands this morning and say hallelujah. God has been good to me. I was wrapped up and tied up in sin. I was bound by drugs. I, I was sick and didn't know if I would wake up and see tomorrow. But when I look back over, the Lord brought me. And if it had not been the Lord that was on my side, can I just preach for about two minutes and get up out of here? I got to go see about my wife. Come on, give him a praise, somebody. Come on. If, if, if I, oh, my God. Hallelujah. If you can look back over your life. Hallelujah. If you can look back over your life and say, God has been good to me. Do I have a holy witness here? Yeah, 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 yes. God has been good to me somebody say when I look back all over my life and I think things over I can truly say that I, I've been blessed and that I got a testimony come on somebody ought to touch somebody and say I done been through but the Lord brought me out Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there's somebody else up in here is in the middle of a storm. It's hard right now. You came to church, but you had to push yourself. You had to just get yourself up out of the bed and press your way on to the house of the Lord. Can I tell you? Come on, somebody. I want to encourage you. You ought to take courage and journey on. The night is dark and you may not be, come on, you seem like you're a long ways from home. But thanks be to God, the morning light appears. 
the storm I stop out here to tell you the storm is passing over I wish somebody come on come on come on anybody going through I say is anybody going through this morning come on you ought to give him a praise right now you ought to begin to bless the Lord right now the storm is passing over I wish you would shake somebody's hand and encourage come on somebody why don't you shake the hand and tell them a storm is passing over hallelujah I know it's blowing right now I know it's hard right now I know you're going through right now but hold up your hand I say hold up your hand the storm is passing over you ought to shout hallelujah come on all over this house you ought to shout hallelujah yeah 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 glory glory hallelujah come on i dare you by faith right now to shout hallelujah Yes, yes, I'm going to shout it when I don't even feel it. I'm going to praise him when I feel like crying. I'm going to bless the Lord. Oh, my God. Say as a psalmist, say bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. I'm going to bless his holy name. You got to praise him like the storm is passing over. I know it came, but it came to pass. Oh, my glory, glory, glory. Go ahead one more time. Shake three people's hand and tell them it's passing over. It's passing over. Come on, it's passing over. Come on, do you believe that? Come on, do you believe that in your spirit? You ought to shout out, go for say, and I'm also glory. It is passing over. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody will give him a praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah is the highest praise. Yeah. If you want a breakthrough right now, come on somebody. You ought to wake him up in your spirit. The Lord is already in this place. We ain't got the calling down out of heaven. We don't have to go nowhere and look for it. I tell you to lift your voice and out of your belly shout hallelujah. 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 You need a breakthrough. You need a you need a healing. You need a deliverance. I dare you to shout hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. You want healing? You want deliverance? Why don't you just open your mouth right now, Verte, and say hallelujah. Oh glory. I've been going through, but I bless your name. Come on, somebody. When you bless the Lord, everything that the enemy stole from you, I hear God says, I'm going to restore that. I'm going to give you back everything that the devil stole. But not only am I going to give it back to you, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. Get it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They're both so hallelujah. Yeah, they're both so glory, 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 glory. Mm. How you gonna weather the storm? Your soul got to have an anchor. You got to have something 
that will stabilize your life. Because the words say, as the storm passes, so does the wicked pass away. See, if you don't have God, if, if, you just, if you just in the church and don't have the church in you, if you just got your name on the road, but you out of the will of God, when the storm comes, you can't stand. Your soul got to be anchored in the Lord. Do I have a witness here? Come on, somebody. It might seem like life is good, but if you don't have Jesus as the center of your life, not only resident, but president, over your life when storms come and when the wind blows you can't stand the enemy is trying to sweep somebody's life away right now because you walked away from your steadfastness in the Lord but I heard the Lord says but though but they that are righteous shall be like a foundation that will stand sure it matters not how the wind blows and how the waves dash God says I will sustain your life glory to God do you I want to ask you precious people do your soul have an anchor do, do, do you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior have you made a commitment to God listen all of us have storms I have them Glory to God. Just as sure as you live, you'll have them. What, 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 what? Listen, we can't keep them from happening. But the key is, is to have an anchor, to have a relationship, to have something that holds our lives. Glory to God. Oh, God Almighty. Let me tell you something. The Lord loves you. He, he's made it possible that every one of us, come on, can have our own personal relationship. And listen, he knows where you've been. He knows what you've been through. And he put you here today in this service. Glory to God. Somebody for the purpose of, 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 of stabilizing something in your life. Saying, listen, the storm will pass over, but you got to be anchored. I invite you to come. The Lord says, come unto me, all you that labor. He says, in heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I want to give you rest. I do not intend for you to fight this alone. I don't, I don't intend for you to wander through your life. God, being blown, tossed to and fro, up and down, rocking, reeling, and you sick and tired of being sick and tired. God says, I got another plan for you you'll come to me right now God says I'll change it today I'll fix it right now I'm not talking about joining the church I'm not talking about giving your preach your hand to the preacher I'm talking about coming to God opening your heart and saying Lord help me or Lord come on if you've never prayed the prayer of faith before inviting him into your life as Lord and Savior of your life or maybe you had prayed at that point but you know that you are in, in a backslidden state or maybe you just maybe maybe you won't call it backslidden but you know you're not where you ought to be in the Lord and the Lord is inviting you this morning saying, come, 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 come. Come on, amen. Because if you're not in a storm, if you haven't been through one, I want you to know there's a storm on the way and you got to get anchored now. Don't wait till the wind stop blowing. Don't wait till the storm come. Come now. Is there one that'll come and stand with me this morning and say, Pastor, preacher, I want to stand. Would you pray with me today? Would you, would you, would you, come on, amen. Because I need to be anchored in the Lord.